Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Today we're gonna show you how to make raindrops falling down a window pane and we're gonna be using Corona Render, but just so you know, Corona has the same node set up as Cinema 4D, so if you're using the physical render, you can follow along too. And if you're using a different engine, all of these concepts can be applied as well. So we're gonna be using one of our blemish maps that you can get on our website. And all of these maps are 16-bit and they're 8K, so they're perfect for a render like this. We have a very simple scene here. We have a background plane, and then we have a cube. This has just been extruded, and you can see that it has a front and a back side and the front side has a polygon selection on it because we want to put the uh, raindrops right on this front face. So we have a glass texture right on this window pane right here, and that's just a very simple glass material, and we're gonna duplicate this, and we're going to change this one to have the raindrops. So let's go to Corona Render, and we're gonna go to our Node Material Editor, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag this, let's actually rename this raindrops first, and we're gonna drag this into our Node Editor. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add a bitmap. So let's right click and go to new shader. We're gonna to go to plugins, Corona, and we're gonna to go to bitmap. We're gonna load up our textures here. So if you buy Blemish Pro or Blemish Pro 2, you're gonna get all these great maps. And in Blemish Pro 2, we have these water drops. So we're gonna do uh, water drops number one. We'll hit open. And let's pipe this bitmap into our bump. And I like to put it into the bump because if you put it into the displacement right away, it's pretty slow in Corona. But if you put it in a bump, you're gonna get a really responsive render. So it's easy to dial in your render first and then put it into displacement later. All right, so we have that set up and let's take this raindrops and let's apply it to the front face of this glass. And now let's fire up Corona Render and we'll see what it looks like. So let's go to our interactive render and let's hit render. All right, so we don't see the raindrops and that's because the bump is turned off uh, of this material by default. So we need to go to this material here and scroll down to the bump section and just check enable. And once we do that, we should see our raindrops. So you can see that we have a duplicate render here. You can see kind of a shadow of this raindrop behind it. That's actually reflecting off of the back panel. So we wanna go into this and turn off that reflection. And what we can do is click on the advanced tab and we can turn off visible in reflections and we should have a much cleaner result this way. All right, so we're gonna want these raindrops to slowly fall down this window pane. And we're gonna do that by going to our bitmap and twirling down additional mapping right here. And we're gonna change the offset on V. So we'll go to the first frame, we'll make a keyframe on offset. Then we'll go to our last frame and we'll make a keyframe and maybe change this to say 50% and then we'll make another keyframe right here. These uh, raindrops will be slowly falling down, but they're all the same size and they'll be falling at the same rate of speed, so it'll look very uh, unnatural. So we wanna find a way to make these raindrops different sizes and to be falling at different rates. And we're gonna do that with a really nice node called, let's go to new shader and uh, under plugins, under Corona, there's this UVW randomizer. And it's a great node for randomizing things. So we'll put the bitmap into this UVW randomizer and put it back out to the bump. And in here we have a whole bunch of different options. So the first thing we're gonna do is randomize the scale. So here's the scale. So we have from, to, and then step. So we wanna change the scale so that these are bigger. And to do that, we'll make it a smaller number. So say 0.2, we'll make these raindrops a lot bigger. And the step is going to blend between the smaller ones and the bigger ones. So ones that are 0.2 or one. And then if we change this to say 0.5, it's gonna blend between these two. So we have some very big ones and some very small ones. Now, right now, uh, this is all just one giant tile. So we wanna actually randomize different tiles on this render. And we're gonna do that by clicking randomize each tile. And nothing will change now because we have to change the number of tiles. Right now, it's just one big one. But if we change this to something like five, it's gonna give us five different tiles and it's gonna look like we have a lot more raindrops on here. So this is probably too many, but if we change it to two tiles, we're gonna to start to have uh, more randomization in this render. So you can see that's looking pretty good. The cool thing about this is that we can actually randomize, now that we have the tiling set up, we can randomize the offset as well. So they're falling, all these tiles are falling at different speeds and they'll be sort of blending into each other and blobbing, it'll look a lot more natural. So we can change uh, some of these parameters. So say minus 20 to zero, and we'll change the step to one. and this one, we can change it to 20 and zero and one. And that way each tile is going to be slowly moving in a random uh, order and it's gonna look a lot more natural. 
All right, so this is looking great, but what if we wanted to add even more randomness and add a different mapping to here? Well, it's really easy to do. All we have to do is add another node here. If we go to our uh, material here, and we go to base layer and we find that bitmap that we'd used. Um, if we find this texture twirl down right here, we can add a layer to this. And if we add a layer, it's going to pump in a new node right in between here. And let me zoom out a bit here. All right, so this new layer node means that we can pipe two different uh, bitmaps into one. So we'll highlight these two. We're going to hold control and drag down. And then we'll go into that bitmap and instead of water drops number one, let's change that to water drops number two. So it's a little bit different. And we're gonna put this one into that layer, into the additional layer. And now if we click on here, we have two different sets of textures. Right now, just the one on top is showing, but if we change this blending mode to screen or overlay, then it's going to be showing both of them. And right now it's a bit hard to see, but if we went to that random node for the second texture, what we can do is change the size of this one to something very small like 0.05. And let's see what that looks like. So we should have some very big blobs now, and you can see that have these really large water droplets, and that's from the second map. And then we have all these little ones from the first map. So that's a great way to blend two different maps together, and it's gonna start looking a lot more organic. All right, so the last thing that you can do is pipe these into displacement instead of bump. It'll give you a bit of a better result. The way we would do that is click on your material, go to basic, and you can turn on displacement. And then you can take this final output and pump it into displacement and get rid of this node. So that will give you a bit of a cleaner result. It just takes a little bit longer to uh, render. So I like to do that after setting everything up with the bump. Speaking of setting things up, I just have one last quick tip, and that is about motion blur. Uh, the textures are moving, but nothing actually in your scene is physically moving, so motion blur is not going to pick up on anything. If you want there to be motion blur, one little trick is to take your window pane and to keyframe it so it's slowly moving down in the frame. And that way it's going to trick Ron into seeing this movement and it will apply motion blur, and then it's going to give the appearance that your raindrops have motion blur on them. So that's a little hack. And there you go, that's how you would add raindrops to a window pane. If you want more of these, Blemish Pro 2 has over 125 of these grunge maps. You can also use them in your roughness channel and they'll give your object scratches and smudges and incredible realism. And those are all available at thepixelab.net if you're interested. I hope you learned something new from the tutorial. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.